All right. Well, we are recording and this is All Things Insurance. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone that joined us this evening from seven to eight. We have an opportunity to dig deep with, with Brandon Wentz. Uh, he, I'll let him introduce a little bit more of what he does, but I can tell you this. As you know, real estate is a people business. Uh, I personally use and bet the vendors myself. And I can tell you that Brandon uh, holds policies to properties that I own. He may even share some examples of things I did wrong. And, <laughs> and he, has, <laughs> he has full ability to do that. Uh, <laughs> and, since so many of our, our clients and our Nellis Group VIP are joining, I want to take a moment to not only introduce Brandon, but I want to introduce you to a couple of things that happened in 2020. Uh, one, if, if you're not connected with us yet, you can go online and connect with us at Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for things that are coming out, things that are new, and so you can stay uh, ahead of what's happening in the market. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, last year, we had the opportunity to help 212 families. As you know, on every 100th home, we give away the entire commission. So we had the opportunity, God blessed our company, where we were able to do that twice last year. First time was for social justice, and we were able to donate to Little Lights, Christian Legal Aid and Kind. Uh, and, and that was fun. You see our clients down on the bottom that they were the ones that were the 100th sale. And then we had an opportunity to do it. How was we've always done it, which is as a voting. And so this was fun. We had over 40 charities in the local area participate. And we had over 3,800 votes, probably from you and others as well. And it came down to the top six. And then you can see the top three, all based on voting. This is a fun way. I love to give money away this way because these are the charities that went out. They found their people and said, hey, endorse me so that we can get this quote unquote free money. Uh, and so we love when our clients participate. And let me give a plug here. If you know of a local charity that's a 501c3 that's doing good in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, make sure they register for our 100th home this year. We've already started collecting local charities for that. If you're not sure what's going on with the market, we get these questions all the time. What's happening? Where do I go? Nellisgroup.com forward slash market. You'll see all the latest updates. You're going to see the charts in your county, what's happening and where should you go? Interest rates. Uh, the 1%, 10% rule. It is crazy what's happening right now. Interest rates are still under 3%. We're seeing more home affordability. You, you might wonder, how is this happening in COVID that prices go up? Well, prices are going up because it's an inverse relationship with interest rates. And since rates are still under 3%, buyers are buying in communities they couldn't have dreamed of before. Uh, virtual real estate, uh, at some point you're gonna say, wait a second, where's the insurance? So just keep in mind that we're all virtual. <laughs> we're, we're COVID or we're, we're doing virtual tours for people that don't wanna walk through properties even virtual closings are an opportunity that wasn't there before. So our real estate industry and the Nellis Group, which is a family business, has adopted to how do we keep our clients the safest possible during these uncertain times? And now, uh, I mentioned it before when we first started, Brandon Wentz, uh, his office is actually in Woodbridge, Virginia. He covers the entire DMV. And, and I'm excited for what he's going to share because I guarantee you that every person listening is going to come away with something new that they didn't know about. And, and Brandon, just as a way of introduction, you know, we're a family-based business and yep. it's exciting to hear a little bit of your background. Can you give us a quick, how did you get into insurance and, and why should people get excited about working with you? Sure, sure. I appreciate that, James. I am a family uh, mom and pop shop as well. So I pride that uh, on my agency. My dad started the state with farmers insurance back in 1994. Um, I can remember at 15 years old, I'm going there after school, answering phone calls, taking payments back when we could have clients come into the office, that is, um, and uh, just filing stuff and just helping them out. Um, so yeah, we're in Woodbridge, we're one of the larger farmers offices. Uh, I think we probably helped about 550 families last year. Um, so we're striving to do over 600 this year, but that's kind of the name of the game. We just, we, we do right by our customers as do you and your, your great company. Um, we try to be honest and ethical and just help people where we can. And if anything, just give you a second look, kind of like we did with your insurance and kind of cleaning up those mismatched deductibles <laughs> and missing <laughs> coverages. Okay. You said I could bring it up. Yeah, so. <laughs> Things, I think you used the term, well, not everything's aligned here. And so <laughs> let's talk about that alignment. And before you even, I love every industry has their own terms. So we picked a couple of them that you may or may not have heard of so that you know this when you're going to talk to an insurance person. So 
Uh, I don't know if you can see the screen, Brandon, but if you can run through each of these, uh, tell us what a clue report is. For those that are going to buy a house, this is extremely important to know. Yep, so important. So a clue report simple. You've got it on auto insurance and you have it on home. It's basically when you go to the doctor, if you will, there's a medical information bank. So when you go to the doctor and say, my back hurts, they put it into a little report. It goes to the MIB and then it sits out there for basically other doctors to see, if you will, and for insurance companies to grab when you apply for life insurance. Well, a clue report is the same thing. It's with your auto and home history, but not so much just yourself. It's also on the home that you're buying. So if we're talking real estate and homeowners insurance, the clue report's very important. And I offer this up as a service to the Nellis Group uh, team of realtors to where when your clients are looking to buy a house, shoot me an address, a couple little pieces of info, nothing uh, invasive. I'll pull a free clue report. It shows me within the past five years, has there been a claim on that house? And of course, has the client had a claim? And I can't tell you how many times it's come up to where one of your realtors will say, hey, we think there might've been pre-existing water damage in the basement. Can you pull this clue report? No problem. Give me two, three minutes. I pull it and come back and say, yeah, there was a $30,000 back of a sewer and drain claim in 2019. And then it helps you to either decide, do you want to move forward with it, further negotiate from there, or at least ask the question to the current sellers as to, hey, what was this claim and what was the outcome? So, Yeah, and this is extremely important, especially in a fast moving real estate market. So uh, Brandon, thankfully, is able to get these done for our clients same day. So we know what we're really dealing with. Um, act of God, what does that mean? Hmm. Um, I'll start with auto insurance. So I'm a big uh, low deductible guy for comprehensive, which is an act of God deductible, if you will. Um, theft, vandalism, windshield coverage, stuff that's out of your control, hail damage on an auto or a home, theft, vandalism, um, I can't tell you how many people that I have that switched to me from Flo or the Gecko and they had an experience to where their car got vandalized. They had a thousand dollar deductible and they're upset that they said, well, my car got vandalized. It was an act of God, if you will. Why do I have to pay a thousand dollars? It doesn't cost, but three, maybe $4 a month. If that, to just take that deductible from a thousand or 500 down to 100 and then when that unfortunate act of God event happens and you've got to pay your comp deductible for car insurance, for example, you just pay a hundred bucks and you move on. It's a lot easier to swallow than that 500 or a thousand. So personal injury. Uh, it's just personal injury inflicted to a person's body as opposed to damage to property, et cetera. Basically, if somebody were to get hurt at your house. Yeah, now deductibles, People have probably painfully have had to pay those before. They might know what they are. Uh, what is your suggestion when it comes to deductibles? I know you kind of gave a glimpse into that just then. What do you recommend on, on car and auto? So car is very simple. I always try to keep it consistent, especially if you have four cars, excuse me, um, across the board within your family. I like to keep each one low comp, maybe a thousand dollar collision, no more preferably a 500. It just depends on your needs, your situation. Do you have youthful drivers? How much money can we save? It's, it's risk or reward. I mean, if you're only saving $10 a year by changing your deductible from 500 to 1,000, I'm going to tell you don't change it. It's going to take you 50 years to make up the difference. It's not worth it. Um, for homeowners insurance, I'm going to apply that same method. Most of the time, most people are going to have a thousand dollar deductible. I've seen a lot of the 1 800 numbers uh, try to sneak in a percentage deductible for homeowners insurance, which I think is really unfair because when I'm, you're on the other line of 1 800 number and the guy says, guy or gal says, well, we're going to give you a 1% wind and hail deductible, that doesn't sound like much. 1% is nothing, right? Well, if it's a $600,000 home in Alexandria, 1% of 600 grand, $6,000. You just chose a $6,000 deductible. We have a hailstorm come through. You need a new roof. Now you've got a $6,000 deductible. You're upset, as would I um, be if I was in your shoes. So I, I try to keep it pretty consistent and just go with 1000 max 1500 for homeowners insurance. Yeah. Um, and exclusions. Uh, this is the, word, it's the famous word that says you're not going to cover it. <laughs> uh, word you never want to hear. 
<laughs> it's yeah, exclusion is uh, not something that's good with insurance. I try to make it to where everything's included. Uh, I mean, granted, not everything can be included. Flood insurance obviously is separate, um, but there are certain little things, and I'm sure I'm going to bring this up. Certain optional riders that don't exclude. Just hedge your bet. And again, I'll bring this up multiple times during this discussion. Rental reimbursement on your car insurance. I can't tell you how many people don't get rental car because they're like, oh, I don't need a rental car. I can borrow a family member's car. Why? It's three, four, maybe $5 a month. And then you don't have to borrow a car five years down the road when life changes and you get into a car accident. Back up a sewer and drain. You never want to hear that's excluded um, if your sump pump fails in the middle of the night. So exclusion, not a good word when it comes to insurance. <laughs> we, we want in inclusion. <laughs> So I've heard a lot of different answers to this, but as we're focused on these three things and maybe we go through them one at a time, what, what are the key factors when I go to apply for insurance and I'm you know, thinking through the things I should say, the things I should ask for? Um, I would say the three, some of the most, I think the most responsible thing that you can do in my opinion is, is go with a, a local agent. Don't do a 1-800 number. Um, and that, that might frustrate some people that are with a 1-800 number, but it's just like with your insurance company. They go with the Nellis group because they know they're going to get quality class. There's going to be a rapport there. There's going to be a consistency there. You don't necessarily get that with Redfin, for example. Um, there's no accountability with a 1-800 number. Don't get a percentage deductible. Make sure you add uh, backup of sewer and drain and don't go on the internet. And if you're not an insurance expert, don't go on the internet and try to purchase your own plan. Um, at least have somebody like myself give it a second look. If the rates work out, fantastic. Um, I would love to have you as a client, but I give people free looks. It's called a farmer's friendly review on a daily basis. And if I can't help you today, that's you know fine. Keep my number in your Rolodex and call me when uh, you know when you want me to give you another friendly review. Yeah. And I will say that, uh, you know, I know there's been more than one client where you reviewed it and you said, Hey, stay with who you're at, or, Hey, they're mm -hmm. going to have a better situation than we have here at farmers. Cause you're not everything to everyone. Right. That's right. And share umbrella policies, umbrella insurance, and, and why people should have that. So, um, again, to, to each his own, not every person's situation is the same. So umbrella policies are fantastic, not necessarily for everyone. And I say that loosely. Um, I have mine, uh, James, you have yours uh, for specific reasons. It's, it's peace of mind and it's protection. So an umbrella policy is just like how it looks. It sits on top of everything. It protects all your underlying policies. It's very inexpensive, but it is an excess policy. If you have rental properties, you're crazy not to have one. It's so inexpensive. Even if you don't have rental properties, let's say you're coming close to retirement or you've got youthful drivers, you've worked too hard to risk one, they call it an accident because it's an accident. I mean, it takes five seconds, 10 seconds to happen. And it can be life-changing. If you've got an umbrella that is normally a couple to a few hundred dollars a year, the insurance company is going to hire the best attorneys that money can buy because they're sitting to lose millions of dollars. So it makes it to where they take their attorneys that are on retainer and they've already paid for and they represent you and you don't have to worry about it without an umbrella. If you've got say state minimum, let's say they just say, okay, here's $25,000 to the person that hit you, which is all that's required in the state of Virginia to drive. And then they back off. And then you're on the hook for the rest if you're getting sued for half a million, you know, a million dollars. So it's just peace of mind. It's, it's very important to have. And I know it's going to vary on, on assets that people have. However, what's, what's a basic minimum that you recommend uh, as far as an umbrella goes? So to get an umbrella, our clients have to have good homeowners insurance records as far as not a ton of claims. Uh, a great driving record, a couple flaws, no big deal, but they can't have multiple DUIs, et cetera. Um, you must have certain limits of liability to qualify, and that's why an umbrella is so inexpensive. So you have to have 250000 each person you hurt, a half a million for the entire car accident, and then 100000 for any property that you damage. 
Um, normally we'll put a half a million to a million dollars in liability on your homeowner's insurance as an underlying. And we do all those things to bring the cost of the umbrella down as well. So I'll kind of teeter it between the top and highest, if you will, higher and highest, uh, if you get what I'm saying, tiers to try to see what discounts will apply to bring the umbrella up and down and we'll bring the car insurance up and down based off of it to, to get you the best bang for your buck. Great. Uh, now, I'm sure people are already think about this since I already said that you may not be the right person for everyone. Um, how and when do you shop for insurance? What, what does that look like for the consumer? Uh, how do you shop for insurance? I'd say I'm big on accountability. Just no 1-800 numbers, no internet. Um, just talk to somebody local, preferably somebody that's been around for a while. Um, it's, uh, I mean, that's the easiest way as far as how, as far as when it's kind of, it's kind of a loaded question, if you will. I mean, I've got clients that have been with me for over 20 years. We, we started in 94. So I have a lot of clients that are still with me from the nineties. Um, they're extremely happy. The service they received has been great. Uh, we've helped them when they've had claims or, you know, kids have gotten into fender benders, their house has caught on fire, et cetera. And their price is still very well on a line with the market. So they really don't have a need to shop. And this is a relationship business. So um, now when do people shop? Uh, that's probably more of an accurate question as far as when do most people shop? I'd say major life events. When you add a youthful driver, it's always a stir in price. That's going to cause people to shop. I suggest you shop. Um, when that happens, if you move into a new home, major life event, you're moving into a new house, shop the homeowner's insurance, get a second opinion, see what policies are out there, see what coverages are out there. Companies offer new coverages all day long uh, from year to year. You buy a brand new car. That's another reason to probably just price the market. Um, but also, I, I always say, again, back to the agent. Um, if you're going to shop it in true price comparison, just apples to apples it. If you are with State Farm, you can't go to eSurance or the General and then go, well, the General is so much cheaper than you are. Doesn't, it, in my opinion, it's not, it's not necessarily, it's not even. Um, but if you go to an agent, a respectable agent, uh, he or she's got good reviews online, you know, it's a quality person that's been around for a while. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it's a good bet. Um, and this, I think, coincides with what we were just talking about. What, what impacts the rates? Uh, and, and I've heard the term between an insurance broker, and insurance company. What are the differences there as you're looking at, like you mentioned, going online versus? Um, good question. So a lot of things can impact rates. I mean, location, um, especially in Maryland, location is very heavy. Uh, Virginia, not so much. Uh, Maryland, just each, states differ when it comes to insurance and each state is highly regulated by their Bureau of Insurance. Uh, claims history is huge. That will change your rate depending on if somebody has no claims or if they have four claims in the past five years, that, that'll make a difference. Um, are there for homeowners insurance, are there fire hydrants in your neighborhood? I'm on well and septic. My homeowners insurance is several percentage points higher than let's say someone who's in my exact or similar setup that's in the next neighborhood over just because they're on public water. There's a fire hydrant there. If there's a fire at my house, they're gonna have to bring a tanker truck. If there's a fire hydrant in the neighborhood next to me, they just plug into a fire hydrant, put out the fire and it's pretty quick. Um, but what impacts rate? I mean, providers are different. Not every policy is created equal. There are some real bad policies out there, especially with homeowners insurance where that word exclusion comes up a little bit too much. Uh, farmers is an open peril. It's just an all perils policy. So our contract, when you get your homeowner's insurance uh, original policy packet from us, yeah, it's gonna be 40 pages, but instead of a hundred pages, it basically just says, okay, this is what we exclude. And I hate to use that word, everything else is included. And it's, it's very easy. So it's an open peril, all perils policy. It says, we'll cover anything other than what's in this. And I pretty much run those scenarios through every you know, client. That way it's an educational thing when you're talking with me, especially before you buy. So uh, share, share about bundling and how that impacts the rates and the policies as well. Sure. Uh, that's the biggest discount I've got. Um, 
I can't say that bundling is that big of a, a deal for companies like Geico and Progressive um, because they don't offer homeowners insurance. They, excuse me, they don't insure homes. They offer it through another person. They don't actually offer the line like Farmers does. So it's kind of like going to Costco's with us. Uh, insurance, whether it's life insurance, auto, home, you buy it in bulk like from Costco's, you're going to get a better rate per piece per item that you get. You're, you know, you're, you're part of that group, if you will. So by bundling, like I said, it's the largest discount I've got. The more discounts I can stack on there, Xfinity, Comcast does the same thing with their triple play. I mean, if you got home alarm, uh, home phone, internet, TV, you know, whatever else they offer and you throw it all together, each piece gets a little bit cheaper. It's the same way with farmer's insurance. And we always try to do that to minimize cost. Uh, and I think you already mentioned it, but as far as some of the essential add-ons, because I, I want to make sure people don't miss out on this, that where you've seen clients uh, that come to you, not your clients, but where people have gotten burned before, maybe with car insurance mm. or home insurance, and you were like, man, I wish they had talked to me first because I would have told them to do X, Y, Z. So essential add-ons, since we talked about you earlier, I'll bring you up again, James. Uh, okay. uh, the back, the back of it, and this is a good thing because we caught it before claim. But uh, the back of a sewer and drain, it just it floors me how many. It, it's not necessary to, in a lot of people's mindsets. If you live in, say, Virginia Beach, you don't have a basement. Up here in Northern Virginia, most of us have basements. Most of us have sump pumps. If your home was built in the past thirty years. When you get on the line of that 1-800 number and somebody's in the Midwest, for example, and they may not have a basement, they don't think to say, hey, you need to add this backup of sewer and drain. It costs $8 a month. And then all of a sudden, the person's in Northern Virginia and they've got a basement with a sump pump and their basement has two feet of water and it's, hey, sorry, you didn't get the $8 a month rider. Um, high liability limits, which we talked about earlier, which are necessary to get an umbrella policy. Buying insurance is the bulk of the price. Changing the plan is not a whole lot of money. So I always kind of risk assess and then I'll say, okay, you've got a $50,000 auto plan. You're a homeowner. You should have at least the $300,000 plan. It's $4 a month difference. These are insignificant tweaks, you know, maybe 10, depending on how many cars you've got. Are you sure that you don't want to entertain looking at this? And then we just kind of educate and I truly let the client pick exactly what they want, but you've got to have a true insurance advisor to point you in the right direction. And uh, Brandon, I know we'll have some entrepreneurs or, or people that perhaps maybe use their car or their home for their business. Are there additional add-ons they should be considering if, if that's how they use the vehicles? 100%. So I can't tell you how many times I've seen other insurance companies. Farmers is good. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I sell for them and have <laughs> for 20 plus years, but I promise you, we try to, play, to pay claims, excuse me. We don't try to exclude, if you will, and not pay claims. We're a large company. We've got the money to do so. But there are certain things that insurance companies can do that can void the contract, give insurance a bad name in general, which is not what we want, especially as an agent, and just void the contract and not pay the claim. I'll give you an example. So you have a construction company and you have... Johnny's painting on the side of your truck, ladder racks all over the back, bunch of tool you know, boxes in the back. You're driving to a job site, you get into a bad car accident. I won't name them, but some of the 1-800 numbers pull up and the scene, they look at it and go, oh, this is not a personal car. You signed a contract that says that you're just driving to and from the office, it's personal use. This F-250 is commercial, not covered. That's never fun for anyone. It's a tiny, easy little rider for me to just change it to business. Um, and that doesn't just pertain to construction. That can pertain to multiple industries out there. Um, but again, you just there's accountability when it comes to a local agent to where you can say, hey, Brandon and I talked about this. There's going to be a rapport as long as you're my client. And uh, I want it done right the first time because I never want to have that conversation where something doesn't get covered. That's a lot harder than, than paying something. It's easy to pay it. It's a lot harder to deny it. Uh, now, we have a lot of clients that do own rental properties or investment properties. 
Uh, can you share any knowledge on, you know, your primary versus what you do for a rental? Is it the same? Sure. So and I'll kind of go outside and I have multiple rental properties as well as do you. I know James, but uh, there's a couple things that I suggest that people do um, outside of insurance. The first thing with insurance is it's a completely separate policy. It's got to be a landlord protector. You have different coverages. It's like a business policy. There's loss of rental income. Uh, and if you have it as a primary policy and your tenant burns the place down, again, that contract comes into place and they can pick on payment, et cetera. And you never want that to happen. Um, so you always want to have the correct protection, the correct policy. Um, as far as, in my opinion, when you've got rental properties, you want to force the tenant to do, and I'm sure you will 100% as a realtor agree, you want to have that tenant in the lease have them have renter's insurance, put it in the lease, have them have a $500,000 liability limit on their renter's insurance. It sounds like a lot, it's not. It's probably 13 bucks a month. And then have them name you the owner of that property and spouse or whomever owns it, business, doesn't matter, as an additional insured. It's free. And that way, God forbid, tenant burns the house down or they're having a party, they're gonna sue the tenant, but also they're gonna sue the homeowner, they're the one with the equity. And then you can just say, hey, I'm sorry, my, my tenant has renter's insurance. I'm listed as an additional insured. Put the claim through their renter's insurance and not through my primary policy, the landlord policy, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, good. And now I know we have questions. Thank you everyone for registering. I know we had questions from that as well as some that have come up in the chat panel already. If you have a question, feel free to throw it in the chat panel. Uh, Brandon, let, let me start with one that came in uh, when they registered. Uh, if a child moves out of your house, can they still be on your auto insurance policy uh, if you still own the car that they drive? Uh, good. Uh, great question, actually. That comes up a lot um, from my current clients and from uh, clients outside of farmers. So yes and no. Um, each company is different. So, and you always want to ask because you never want for, again, for a claim to not be covered. But for myself and most companies, if they live in another state, that's normally a hard no. Um, unless they're at college, they can't stay on your plan. So, and also it's, um, if their license plate's in a different state, the DMVs don't speak to each other. So if your child moves to Maryland just because they moved for work, and then all of a sudden they get a Maryland driver's license and Maryland tags, they must have Maryland insurance. They will get in a lot of trouble if they keep Virginia insurance because the MVA, I believe it's called, doesn't talk to the DMV and therefore they can't verify that you've got Virginia farmers insurance. They don't like that. They'll send you a nasty letter in the mail. Um, if your child is in college, no big deal. We toss a little endorsement on there. Sometimes it can actually lower the premium depending. Um, so that's another option. But I think the main rule of thumb is, is when your child moves out, especially if they're over 25, they're out of college. My opinion is you want the liability shifted off of you, sent more to the client, to the uh, child, excuse me, and put the car in that child's name. Now, then they'll get insurance on their own. If that's not an option, let's say you've got a loan, the bank is being difficult, they won't let you refinance it and put it in just the child's name, that's fine. We just need to kind of create a policy accordingly. I would probably still suggest that the parent create a policy in that other state, if it is another state, pay the bill because they're gonna be held accountable in the event that the child doesn't pay the bill and the DMV gets word of it, they're gonna get a, a nasty little fine. It avoids that a um, little bit of legwork, but that's probably the smartest way of doing it. Um, if they're in the same state, we can just make it to where we list the parent on there as an additional insured and as a registered owner. And that way, if the child doesn't pay the bill, they'll just get something in the mail that says, hey, this is about to cancel. You, yeah. need, to call your, you need to call your son. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, we have a question here as far as does farmer offer does farmers offer VPP for renters so value, valuable personal property insurance? Oh yes, hundred percent. So it's for renters, homeowners insurance, um, and with pretty much every company out there, uh, if it's uh, fine arts, jewelry, furs, um, collectibles, 
<clears throat> jewelry is probably the most common. You have to schedule it. It's so expensive. I, I mean, I like watches. Um, I have mine scheduled. God forbid I leave it in a hotel room or something like that or on vacation or uh, somebody steals it out of your luggage going to the airport or something silly. You have no deductible through my plans most of the time. And then you can just put in a jewelry floater for that item. Because if not, and you've got a, let's say a $5,000 engagement ring or watch, et cetera, there's limitations on every policy with jewelry. And it only covers probably $1,500, maybe $2,500 per piece. And a lot of the times, like if the wife um, has an engagement ring and she loses the center stone, if the center stone just falls off, it's not covered unless you have that scheduled. So it's very, very smart to do. Uh, do umbrella policies cover actual cash value or replacement costs? Uh, neither, because it's just liability. So um, umbrella policies are, it's more to protect you from getting sued by everyone else. So with an umbrella, it's just strictly liability. So you hit me, I'm hurt really bad. We'll use you, James, as an example. You hit me in a car accident, I'm a hurt real bad. I sue you for a million and a half dollars. I win. You're, yeah, I'm hurt pretty bad, let's say. Uh, so a half a million can come off of your car insurance, which is normally the max. Then you've got a million dollar umbrella that comes on top of that. And it's just liability. So it's really neither. It's uh, pain and suffering, attorney's bills. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just, it's just strictly liability. Okay, great. We have a question here. If they've owned their home for some time and, it, and the and the property's appreciated in value, how much should they get the insurance for? What does that look like just to be covered in the event of fire, flood, natural disaster? What do you recommend? Great question. So with my policies, when I set it up, we do a Marshall and Swift appraisal system. So I take all the specs of your home, has no bearing on the value whatsoever. So whether your home is in McLean or in Manassas, I'm going to insure it for about the same price. Lumber is going to be the same. Uh, labor, okay, a little bit off, but the majority of the difference is the land. And when the house burns down to the ground, I'm not doing anything with the land. Uh, your basement's already dug out, your driveway's still there, your tap fees are already done. So we have an endorsement that just slowly trickles up based off of inflation, inflation excuse me, from year to year to where you don't have to worry about it because we never want to underinsure you. Um, coincidentally today, I talked to a lady who's been with USA for 40 years, same house. It wasn't done right originally. And her home that I said would cost about 530,000. She has insured for 270. My pol it, it's grossly underinsured. My policies, you can't do that with. Um, so it's just, you want to have a review. And even if it's, if it's with your current company, you can always go back to them every five to 10 years and say, Hey, I just want to a little double check, just a refresher. Uh, if you're not ready to leave them, you know, I respect loyalty. Just ask them for a refresher and hold them accountable to reviewing your account. And that way you've kind of gotten ace in your pocket. Now we have a lot of clients, Brandon, that buy land and then custom build on that land. Mm -hmm. uh, when they buy the land, is that something they should insure or do they wait until they actually build the structure and everything else? 100% for liability purposes. God forbid a kid gets hurt on that land and you're getting sued. It's maybe $25 a year through farmers to add vacant land onto your primary home policy. All we're doing is extending liability. And I probably have, I don't know, maybe 50 clients a year that will build custom homes, especially in times like now where the market's really hot and, uh, and, Custom homes is, is a big thing right now, and uh, they just do a builder's risk policy, and we offer those as well. They're very inexpensive, and it covers you throughout the build. But yeah, to answer your question, you've got to add the land. It's a necessity. Now, a question here. You, you mentioned having the sewage backup, water backup policy on a home. If you're in a, a ground-level patio unit condo, uh, do people take policies on those as well? 100%. Uh, the bottom floor is... A lot of the times, most of the time, the one that gets messed up first, unfortunately. So we'll ensure what's called an HO6 policy, which is um, to the uh, person that asks, I assume the, their individual condo unit. Um, it covers 
contents that can cover back of a sewer and drain. There's some building coverage on there, but I also do 60 to 80, $100 million condo complexes where we will insure the whole building. There's been a dozen times at least in the past five years that I can think of to where the main sewer line at that condo complex will just collapse. Let's say the line was put in in the 80s. It's roughly 40 years old. The line collapses. Everything starts going back into the unit. Unfortunately, you don't realize it. Our most recent one, we coincidentally insured the whole complex here in Woodbridge and the bottom floor. Um, our client was out of town for a month. So when she came back, there was sewage and mold everywhere. We always sell that back of a sewer and drain rider. It was a thousand square foot condo. It was probably, I want to say $20,000 worth of cleanup and damage because it was so moldy and they had to gut the entire thing. And without this little $8 a month rider, we would have paid for the common areas on the master plan, but we wouldn't have paid for her HO6 policy. And she would have been out at least the 20 grand. On top of that, her personal property. Um, we put her up in a hotel for, uh, I want to say a good month, month and a half. Um, but yes, a hundred percent, especially on a ground level. Um, wonderful. Oh, this is an interesting question that just came up. Uh, how much should we look into litigation history of an insurance company? Uh, how often they take cases to trial, settlements, those type of things. Good question. Um, a little bit difficult. I think that insurance companies, I put more reliance on the agent and as far as getting an agent that knows what to advise you on. We are held accountable as to what we say. This is what I recommend that you buy. And we have our own insurance for that to where if we recommend or don't recommend that you should buy something or tell you not to buy something um, and say, no, you don't need that. Well, we're held accountable to that. And that's one of the main reasons to go with an agent. But um, a lot of the times insurance companies with reviews, they tend to get bad reviews uh, more often than not, um, which I'm not saying that we don't have issues, but uh, it's one of those things to where you expect it to go smooth every single time. And I'd love that to happen. It's not always the case. So reviews and litigation, et cetera, can be a little bit biased. I say go to the agent. If the agent's got bad reviews, don't go with them. If the agent's got good reviews, I probably have 100 Google reviews. 99% of them will be five star. There's a reason behind that. So it's I, I'm more pushed towards that. Um, and as long as you go with a good company, the policy speaks for itself. Insurance is highly regulated by state government. The insurance company although sometimes it seems like they can do what they want, they cannot. Uh, the Virginia Bureau of Insurance says what they can do, what they can sell, the prices that they're allowed, um, what they cover, what they can deny, they get audited annually. And those fines are pretty hefty if they break the rules. So uh, with a company like Farmers, we'd rather pay than have to deal with getting audited and doing something stupid. I mean, we're a reputable company, but, but great, great, great question. Here's an interesting one, getting flagged by an insurance company. So, so the myth out there, and maybe it's true, maybe it's not. If I, if I have a leak or if I have some issue and I call my insurance company, but I don't place a claim, does that go on the house or the car? Uh, great question. So that's one of those things that I don't like about 1-800 numbers. Um, with us, what you talk about, we're a, a mom and pop. So when you call my local Woodbridge office, what we talk about, I'm going to give you advice like I would give a family member, my brother, my, you know, my best friend. It is completely off the record and we're very consistent. We're held accountable, like I said earlier. So when you call me and you say, hey, it's James Brandon, I've got a leak in my nice white ceiling kitchen back behind you there. And I don't know what to do. It's, there's a brown spot right above the sink. There's obviously a pipe leaking. What should I do? If you call any of the 1-800 numbers, you just put in a claim. Every other insurance company will be able to see that for the next three years because it's no different than you calling and saying, hey, I reversed out of my driveway and I ripped my mirror off on my mailbox or I hit my neighbor's or uh, my family member's car and scratched the bumper a little bit. What should I do? It's too late. You've already told them. 
And a lot of times they kind of want to lock you in and they'll file that claim with no money paid out. And that way it's not as easy for me to get you a great rate and take their business. So not the same with us. Uh, that's the best thing about having an agent. And I will say this, and, and, and it doesn't always work out great for Brandon, but whenever we have a client that calls us about an issue with their home or car or anything like that and says, hey, what should I do? I always ask them, well, who do you have? Well, I've got Liberty Mutual. I've got USA. I've got whatever. And I always say, don't call them. <laughs> call, <laughs> Brandon, call Brandon first to find out if this is something that they should or could cover and what should you do or not do. And that's when you, I'm sure you have those conversations about deductible, this, this, and this. And yeah, and, yep. and, and I do not mind that at all. I love that. Um, I love helping people. I mean, this is, we've been in business for a long time, so I, I'm not new. I feel like when you're established, you can, you're a, a lot happier to just take the time and, and talk with new people and give them advice. Uh, I mean, if I can earn your trust and get your business, fantastic. But uh, to your example, just the other day, we, we had uh, one of your clients who called and they had an unfortunate event with a French drain and they need a French drain system. It keeps leaking back into their house. Not with me. Uh, they don't currently have insurance with me. I talked to her for a while and just tried to explain off the record so that she didn't have to call her 1-800 number. I won't mention their name, but um, and kind of cry wolf because she had already put in multiple claims for the same exact instance, but she needed something fixed to stop it in the future. And, and as I explained to her, I, I said, unfortunately, I'm not your insurance agent, but nine times out of 10, they're not going to pay for future maintenance issues. I don't think that I would call them and say, hey, you know, there's been water damage again, unless you plan on saying, hey, USA, I'll just throw their name out there. Uh, hey, USA, um, I need this fixed. And sorry, guys, I'm a 21 year USA member. I just don't have great company. I just don't have my insurance with them. But uh, you know, I've got this damage to my house. I said, just keep it quiet and I'll, I'll help you through the process, if you will, of fixing it on your own. It was, luckily it wasn't that much damage, but again, a great service we offer. I'm happy to do it. A new question. When not at fault, home or auto, should you report the incident to your insurance company? No, nope. Um, and I have some clients that depending on how you explain that to, we've got six agents here out of my office. So I'm all uh, fully capable of, of saying, hey, you know, this is what we recommend doing. And some clients take it in different ways. But to answer your question, I don't like having any activity on my account. I don't want your rates to go up. I'm probably the opposite of everyone else in insurance to where I don't want you to pay more. When you sign up with me, I want you to save as much money as possible. I want your rates to stay as low as possible. And you only want to go to the insurance company if you have to when you're asking for a check. Because you get in that car accident, Geico's not fixing your car. Progressive's not fixing your car. Farmers isn't fixing your car. We're paying Johnny's auto body to fix your car. So if you can keep it off the radar, and unfortunately, my wife was hit by Progressive twice in the past six years, both not our fault. We didn't even let farmers know because I don't want the activity on my account. And you don't necessarily have to report it. We can talk about it off the record. And that's a great thing about having an agent. But when you call Geico or Progressive, they're going to flag your account and say, okay, there's an accident. And it's going to, I don't want to say go against you, but it will be there as a little asterisk, if you will, uh, on your record. And you're not even asking for any money. We went to Progressive both times. They paid for all the rental car. They paid for all the medical bills. There was no deductible, which a lot of the times you put it through your own insurance company, you have to pay your deductible, wait for reimbursement back. That's no different than suing someone. That could take a year um, if it's an unfortunate event um, or it's an insurance company that just doesn't want to deal. Um, so uh, all those things, and you can still take it to Johnny's Auto Body if when we put it through Progressive, you can still choose your own auto body shop and I can tell you which auto body shop to put it through. And a lot of the times there's things like accident forgiveness riders that when you put in a claim, not necessarily a claim that is your fault, but if you put in a claim, it's a forgiveness against that claim. I don't want you to lose that endorsement, lose that rider over something that wasn't your fault. So I'm, I'm always trying to protect my clients. And so I would say, if you can avoid it, don't do it. Now, if you're hit by a commercial vehicle, not that easy even when it's not your fault. If you're hitting a parking lot, never that easy. Um, just because it's, it's 
private property. And it's more of like he said, she said, and normally you'll each have to put the claim in through your own insurance company and let them battle it out. In those circumstances, I'm just going to say cut your losses. Normally, you can try, but I don't want you to go through the headache. Let's just put it through farmers. That's what you pay us for. Let us fix your car and move on. We'll take care of it. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, how do, how do they uh, find you? We'll be sending your information out, but what's the fastest way to, to have you take a second look or to make sure that their policies uh, are good to go where they're at? So um, I, I appreciate that. 703-490-4903 is my office number. Or just Brandon, Woodbridge Farmers Insurance. Just Google me. Uh, you can see my stellar reviews. Um, I'd love to give you a, a farmer's friendly review. Um, you know, no strings attached. Like I said, James, it's for several of your clients and other um associates that we've got. I, I'm happy to give it a farmer's friendly review and give you a non-biased, honest opinion. Say, here's what I think. Why do you have this? Why don't you have that? And if I can help, fantastic. If not, it, if I can educate you, that's the name of the game. So I appreciate the time. I love it. Uh, thanks, Brandon. Mm -hmm. uh, to close it out, we want to show you this. A lot of our clients and people ask, well, what are you reading? What you know, we read every uh, month, we read a new book at the Nellis Group. This year, it might only be six books. Uh, but take a look here on the screen. There's probably at least one or two books that you haven't read before. We highly recommend many of these. The one word you probably saw, we took the one word challenge and what that was this year. Our one word for the company is create. Um, so what's your one word going to be this year? And, and there's a great book called Can't Hurt Me. If you really want to push yourself to a higher fitness level, uh, if you're thinking about investing in real estate, cash flow quadrant. Um, or even in stocks. It's a great opportunity to kind of think through what you should know. Again, you can find us nellisgroup.com uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, thank you again for joining the series. Stay with us. I'm going to uh, pause the recording here. Uh, does, anyone have, uh, does anyone have any other questions for Brandon?